Right, guys, welcome to the second part of this first video in our three part series of higher time frame analysis for the first day of this week and continuing from where I start at. Um, so, uh, what I was saying was you're going to look at reference to caps forward fees to determine what level IPD is trying to reach for. And then, um, one thing you also need to consider is what direction is the market trading at okay so that is also what you need to consider where is the liquidity resting where is the imbalance resting in the marketplace and uh where could price potentially make a turning so if price was on a bullish trend where could it turn around from and then go bearish and is there enough price action to support that price is ready to go bearish is there a breaking market structure on the daily Okay, so this is all what you need to take into consideration. So now, what looking at IPD actually does, it puts you in a place where most people aren't even aware of. Okay, so you can know beforehand where the total sub setups are, you can know beforehand what institutional reference points to look at, you can know beforehand where the market could most likely reach for, where you can expect explosive moves. Okay, so this is what the, the look back phase is the most important aspect of the IPD data analysis. Okay, the caps forward phase is simply you're trying to determine based on price action what price wants to do in the future. Okay, so now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to break this down for you in steps. So if, if you're not writing from all what I said in the previous of this video, I want you guys to make a note and start to write. Okay, so let me remove this. I'm going to remove all this quickly. So what I want to do is I'm going to give you step by step approach on how to draw up your IPD. And what I want you guys to do is to go to your charts and then um, go to your charts and do your own homework, do your own assignments, and all these. So you get, you understand what IPD is. So you don't just rely on Gene says this, so I'm not going to do any homework on this. And once I say this, I'm going to take this action. And you don't do, you don't, don't treat private like that. You need to get used to the setup so that you can have faith in the setup. You can trust the setup. Okay. So, uh, another thing I want you guys to know is higher time frame analysis is very useful for you as a trader to know where fund level liquidity would be resting. So uh, if you guys have been on my webinars a lot, you're going to understand that I basically talk about the battle between the central banks and the fund level liquidity, which is the edge funds, okay? So the edge funds have made a considerable portion of the profit, profitability of the central banks. But edge fund, just liquidity, where edge funds have surpluses around. Okay, and then it's just enough liquidity that the central bank banks find uh, attractive. They're going to try to want to move price to that level because moving price to that level gets them in profit and then gets the edge funds in losses. So just like every other banking entity, the central banks want to make profit. So you're in the business of making profit whilst you're still regulating price for all other players in the marketplace to speculate in. Okay, so make sure you also have that. Uh, so, if you look at prices, it's usually macro moves is uh, quarterly moves in price. Okay, so what do I mean by macro moves? If you go to your monthly or you go to your weekly or your daily, you're going to see that price is moving as we're moving in a certain direction for years. So now, if you take an example of the DXY, current price action as of 2020, February, okay, you're going to see that the DXY was making higher highs and rallying since, uh, uh, I think since 2018, DXY sales rally. So for two years now, DXY has been on an uptrend. This is what we call macro trend. So this is the huge, huge trend, trend that goes on for years. And basically, these kind of trends are driven by purely by fundamentals. Okay, so fundamentals in the sense of interest rate. So what actually drives price on a macro macro level is interest rates. The higher the interest rates, higher the currency price, because price always wants to seek yield. 
Okay, so price is going to want to see Q, and higher interest rates means uh, higher yields for currencies, which is going to automatically drive prices higher. So this is why DXY has been rallying for two years. But if you also look at that same DXY, you're going to see like that for like a period of two, three, four months in the two year span, okay, there were bearish moves. Okay, this is what we call quarterly bearish shifts. So now what is actually driving price on a quarterly level is IPDA. So on a macro macro level, I'm talking about two years, five year moves, 10 year moves, fundamentals drive prices, which is the interest rates. But on the basis of quarterly shifts, three months period, four month period, what actually drive prices are the IPDA, trying to seek liquidity. Eventually, IPDA is going to bow to the interest, the, the fundamentals, which is interest rates. Okay, but on a shorter span, price is going to try to seek liquidity around this level because these are profitable blocks in prices where central banks could drive price to to make a profit. Okay, before they move prices in line with fundamentals. So this is why you're oftentimes in a bullish market, you're going to see corrective markets of about three, four months two, three months like that, in like a space of two years, you're gonna see three, four of this kind of setup. I'm gonna show you guys examples very, very soon. So this is the essence of IPDA to know where the fund level liquidity is and where price is potentially trying to reach for. Okay, so uh, let's go to a step-by-step -step approach on how to draw up the IPDA, I also reference the look back phase and how to draw a password phase on IPDA. Okay, so give me a second, guys. I'm going to get this real quick. All right, so uh, I want you guys to write this on your title how to use the um how to sorry uh, sorry it got confused a little bit um all right so on your notepads write the title quarterly shift utilizing the ipd and the first of editing is the look back okay so title quarterly shift uh so editing the look back and i'm going to give you a step-by-step -step approach on how to uh how to identify the look back phases, what, what to reference, what to do. Okay, so get your notepads down and uh, let's get to texting and writing. Sorry. So, um, see, that's for those people who prefer to see what I'm doing. So, the first thing you want to do is you want to delineate the first month, the first current trading month. Okay, delineate the first current or your current trading month. Okay. Now, I'm gonna give you an example. We're currently in the month of October. So what you're going to do is, you're going to reference the 1st of October. Okay. it's your month by drawing up a vertical line, drawing up a vertical line, The first trading day of the month. Okay, so note that the first trading day of the month is where you're going to pull up your vertical line. Then your step two now is to okay. The step two now is to go back 20 days. Okay, so now let's let's do this. So look back. 20 days to 40 days, 60 days, and reference where there was a quarterly shift. Oh, let's do this. A reference where there was a quarterly shift. 
Alice. Okay. Oh, sorry. I think this is actually number four. Oh, come on. That was that was a huge mistake. Apologies, guys. Um, all right. So let's let's we uh, let's recap again. So the first thing you're gonna do is you you're gonna delineate your month by drawing up a vertical line at the first trading day of your current month. Okay. So you're gonna delineate your line. Sorry, I messed this all up. So sorry, 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 guys. You're gonna delineate your 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 charts by drawing up a vertical line at the first trading day of the current month. Okay. Then what you're gonna do next is you're going to identify institutional order flow. So this simply means you're asking the question: Is price bullish or bearish? Okay. So you can easily do this by looking at the. Uh, and by the way, all what we're doing is on higher time frames. Specifically for this lesson, we're using the daily time frame. Okay, so you're gonna identify institute. Why do I keep getting this wrong? Institutional. You're gonna identify institutional order flow. Okay. So, like I said, the easier way to do this is you're gonna ask yourself a question: Is price respecting bullish order blocks or bearish order blocks? Okay. If price is respecting bearish order blocks, then you are in a sell model. If price is respecting bullish order blocks, then you're in a bullish institutional order flow. Okay. That is the simplest way to look at price. So is price making higher swing points? Institutional. Okay, so is price making higher swing points? That is the question you want to ask yourself. And once you're done, knowing what direction the market so all you simply do is just go to your daily and ask yourself where what, what direction is the market trading at okay has the market been making higher highs higher lows in the last 60 days or lower highs and lower lows in the last 60 days or has the market been ranging it's very very easy so you don't need me to do drop live examples for you to know what range the market is trading at it's very simple okay so the first thing you're gonna do is Draw up a vertical line at the beginning of your current trading month. Step two is to identify the market direction, which is your institutional order flow. And then step three is to reference all institutional points between, okay, between the beginning of the current month back to the 60-day range. Okay, so going to now let's not say reference, you're going to identify identify all institutional keep getting the spelling wrong so all institutional reference points okay why do i keep getting the spelling wrong okay in i was actually correct this time in you're going to identify all institutional reference points i'm going to put a bracket um old eyes Okay, for example, so old highs, old lows, everybody gaps, liquidity voids, other blocks. ETC. Okay, that is your step three. Right, and this is what you're going to identify. And this, guys, is what you do for your look back phase. So let me actually put this in title. Let's make this larger for people. Let's make this 20. So I'm going to make this not bold. Next title. Step by step guide for look back. Okay, so this is your step by step guide for look back. This is what you want to be doing for your look back phase. Delineate your month, drawing up a vertical line, you identify institutional order flow, and then you identify all institutional reference points, and you make sure they're all noted on your daily time frame. Okay, 
make sure you know that you're doing this on your daily time frame. So I don't want to get you guys asking questions. What time frame is Gene using? Gene is using the daily time frame. If you want to do all this on your daily time frame, okay? And then step two is the uh, phase two is the cast forward phase. Okay, so we're doing the cast forward phase now. We're done with the look back phase. We're doing the cast forward phase and I'm just gonna change this to step by step guide for step by step guide for cast. Fast forward, we're gonna make this bold and here we go. So uh, back to test. First step is you anticipate and uh, take market shift in a 20, 40, 60 day range, okay? Uh, come on, come on, what should you do? So you anticipate market shift in 20, 40, 60 day range forward, okay? Or past current price action. Let's actually change this to past current price action because I don't want people asking questions. So I know people are gonna ask questions. When you say, when you, when you say forward, what do you mean by forward, Jim? Because there are always going to be people asking questions. So I'm trying to make sure everything is all clear. Okay. So you anticipate the market shift in 20, 40, 60 day range past current price action. So you're looking forward, expecting what price can do. So the keyword there is anticipate. So you're expecting what price can do. Okay. So um, basically, that's what you're doing. Okay. This is a one step approach. Okay. So the most important aspect is the look back phase and then the next aspect is the cash wall phase where you can anticipate a shift in price every 20 days 40 days 60 days either to correct market structure or in line with the trend so this guys brings us to the end of the uh first part of our video series uh what i'm actually going to do now is i'm going to drop a live example of what I mean, or how to utilize IPBA data ranges. So what I'm gonna do here is add to watch list. Oh, come on. This is actually a mistake. So we're gonna reset the charts here. We're going to go to daily time frame. Let's look at what price is doing. We're setting the charts there. Go to your daily. Okay, so what we're going to be referencing is Jira USD as an example, so that if you are doing your, uh, your exercises or your homework, you guys can all understand what to do. All right, so what we're trying to do with IPDA is to reference where price is seeking for in terms of liquidity. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull up the replay tool around this level, so you guys can all note how I'm doing this. So we're going to make like this was, uh, this is actually current price action. So currently on the daily, this is the month of October. This last down can, up candle, sorry, was uh, 10th of October, which is the last up candle. So we're going to reference the first trading day of the month, which is the first of October. That is the first trading of the month. Uh, like the step by step guide I gave you guys, you're going to put a vertical line the 1st of October. Okay. And now, what you want to do is you want to look back. Okay. So now you want to identify what, where, where is price trading now? Because that is your step two. Where is institutional order flow? Downside or the upside? Bullish or bearish? Clearly, institutional order flow is bearish. Okay. If you see institutional order flow is bearish, but now we see price is taking out this other block. And if price takes out this other block, where is price trying to reach for? Price is reaching for this clean levels. Okay, so this constitutes a rejection block. And I know some of you guys have been asking me what a rejection block basically is. Rejection block is equal body candles like this. Okay, look how clean these candles are. 
that is irrigation block guys very very clean levels it's going to be fun level liquidity resting around those levels so you can expect price to drain into that level and the major sorry guys so now the major clue that we can expect price to trade into this level is that price failed to respect this bearish order block okay if price fails to respect bearish order block there's nothing in terms of an institutional reference point until you get to old highs which is rejection block around the level okay so we could expect this as a total soup or as a breaking market structure when price gets to this point Okay, so what we're doing now is we, uh, all right, so now let's, let's look at the look back phase first. Let's identify all institutional reference points. So if we go back in the range of 60 trading days, okay, so we're doing 16 trading days to encapsulate 20, 40 trading days also. We're going to do a uh, stop here because price doesn't actually extend all the way out. Let's see. So 60 trading days moves to 40, 40 trading days moves to 20, 20 trading days. All right, so now what, what we want to be doing around this level is we want to look for all the institutional reference points in this level. Okay, so this is a 20 day IPDA high. I'm going to notify, write that that way. So we're going to write 20 day IPDA high. I don't know why I keep calling the IPD data when data is actually in D. So uh, forgive me guys, it's actually IPD and not IPD data. So this is a 20 day IPD AI. Why? Because from this range, this range falls under the 20 day period. Okay. And the next reference point is we're, we're going to use the midpoint of the scandal as a possible main threshold if price rejects of this level and wants to trade higher, this could be a potential retracement back down in price. So we're going to label this 40 day mean threshold other block. So that is a bearish other block. Okay. 40 day mean threshold bearish other block. Let's make this font actually smaller. More fonts. Okay, so that we have charts are clean. Then old eyes, 40 day old eyes. We're doing this step by step, identifying all institutional reference points. 40 day old highs. Uh, we're gonna look back again. Let's see what level is next. All right, so the old eyes basically falls inside this other box. So there's no point to reference this because once price gets to this level, price is essentially trading back into this other box. So the next level to reach for is a 60 day ejection block, which is this clean equal body candle. We're gonna write 60 day ejection block. Okay, so we're looking at price to the upside, and then let's look at the downside. To so the downside, we have daily rejection block around this level. So we're gonna put this here. This falls under the 20 day. So anything inside current price action back to 20 day, we still reference that as the 20 day IPD. So this is 20 day, uh, or could just write 20 IPD. So let me the time we're spending on text or um, writing all this text. So 20 day IPD low. Okay. So if price actually goes bearish, this is what we're going to be seeking for as price target. We're not actually using this bearish candle because you can see price reacted to this inside this candle. Price has reacted to this bearish candle. So there's literally no point why we want to use this level as a bearish order block. If price comes back to this level, we can expect price to trade straight through because price has tested all these levels in the past. So what we have now is price is basically in the middle of a range. Price is taking out this bearish order block and we can see potentially higher prices into this level. So what I just did now is the look back phase, okay? I did a look back phase. Now, the next thing to do is the cash forward phase. Cash forward phase is you're simply anticipating where is price trying to reach for. Now, I'm giving you clues why price would most likely want to reach for this level, short term, okay? Price would want to reach for this level because this is basically like equal highs on the daily time frame. One, two, three, four, five. Look how clean this level is. And if you look back in price, 
Price has been down trending for a very long time. So you know there's going to be a lot of trend-based traders chasing this down move. And if everyone is chasing this down move on a fund level basis, what would your stop losses be? Old highs, old highs, old highs. Okay? So everyone will have stop losses around this level. And then it would then be logical for us to expect price to trade into this region because it would be profitable for the central banks to move price into this high. Now, the next question is, we want to note how price reacts on this high. Does, quite, sorry, does price quickly trade into this high and then quickly pull away? Or does price trade into that high and close solidly above the eye of that candle? Because if you see a solid close, I mean, really, really solid close above the eye of this candle, that is going to indicate a shift in market structure to the upside. Okay, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, higher high. And then we can expect higher low, higher high, like that. But if we see price quickly just spike this level and quickly pull away, then we know that was a total soup, a stop run to get this level, then price could start to seek this 20-day IPDA low. So this is the way I want you guys to look at price. Okay, so now let's do the replay. Let's see where price reached for. Okay. Uh, so there was a bear shadow block around this level. I'm just going to eyeball in all these levels so you guys all know. I of this bear shadow block. Price is came to that of this bear shadow block. Bounced off and now we've reached this high. So now, like I said, I want to know the way price closes around this level to see if there is actually a breaking market structure or a shift in price. Now, price closes suddenly above the 20 IPDA high, closes above the main threshold of this candle. And if price closes above the main threshold of this bearish other block candle, this no longer is going to be a reference for downside. Okay, because there's nothing now to reference for bearish prices. So we know the next target to the upside is 40 day old highs. And this is actually a break in market structure. We can see retracement back down to most likely this bearish other block. Okay. Either this bearish other block or this old highs, and then we could expect price to trade to the upside. Okay, so I want to know how price reacts. Well, now the next level to reference institutionally is our 40 day old highs. Okay, so let me actually remove the vertical lines because we basically already know where our institutional reference points are. So we're not going to consider this downside until price starts to show tendencies that it wants to take out this level. So for now, we're looking at all upside objectives, okay? We're looking at all upside objectives in price. Let's see what price does if we can get to a next institutional reference point, 40 day old eyes, see? All right, so now we've met the 40 day old eyes. The next, Institutional reference point is a 60 day rejection block. So now look at the way we're looking at the market in phases. Okay, so we had our first target here. Okay, price broke through. Now we know we're bullish. Can expect a retracement and more bullish, probably more bullish prices. And prices smashed through. Now we want to see how price reacts off this level. We can say expect a retracement back down for higher prices. Okay, so I want you guys to know that. So there's a bearish on the block around that level. Also, a bearish other block around this level. So, actually, I'm not going to use the weak of candle because price has beat the high of this daily other block, bearish other block. So, I prefer to use the midpoint of this candle as a potential long entry should price reach for that level. So, I'm going to draw this, and uh, the midpoint of this candle is going to be where I can expect price to reach for. Open to the midpoint of that candle because essentially those two candles are bearish other block. So the open of the candle. Now, the reason why I'm not using the eye of any of these bearish other block candles is because we've seen a reaction of that eye. There's a price reaction of that eye. So we can expect price to trade through because price has been efficiently traded at this point. The next point to reference in terms of any upside movement is. The open to the midpoint of these two down candles, which will constitute a bearish other block. Okay, so now price is trading higher. Uh, let's see what price does. Okay, so price basically has taken out its old eyes. Remember, if you want to consider this a break in structure, we want to see price quickly pull away. But now price is showing signs of stalling. Okay, bearish candle. If price shows willingness to go down, 
we can expect that we're reaching for this level. So now what we're trying to do is we're not trying to catch the eyes of this level. We're waiting for the market to show something. And we're going to do what the market is basically indicating. Okay, so let's see what price action is going to do. All right, so price is showing you willingness to trade to the downside. We could look for a retracement, either to take out this eye as a breaker or look for a retracement as a failure swing back up to this level. Uh, we could sell the correction back down and wait for higher prices, okay? So, uh, actually, we, okay, we're still in the month of October. So the next month we're going to reference in Castle what is in November, okay? So it should price, start trading around November, we're going to do the same process all over again. I, I find it's comfortable doing this the first of every month as opposed to doing this every single day. So that way I know what levels I'm looking for. Okay, so until the first of November, we're not going to do the look, the entire look back phase thing. We're just gonna see what price does. Okay, so this is our cast forward. So you wanna be casting forward every one month. So I mean, each new month you're, you're Refer you're doing the entire look back phase again, referencing where price is. So for me, this makes everything convenient for me. Okay, so that way I don't have to do this every single day, looking for the look back phase, like five, six, seven, eight currency pairs. So uh, we can expect price to trade down to that level, in terms of downside. Sorry, we can expect price to trade down to this old high level, in terms of downside. So price is essentially taking out the main threshold of this 40 day. So we're going to delete this, we're going to delete this. So we can expect a retracement back down. And uh, let's see what price does. Oh, all right. So price comes, gives us a failure signal like we expected. And price trades down to our first level for corrective structure. Now we want to see how does price react of this level? Does price show willingness to go higher? If price is showing willingness that it wants to rally, then we know the next level is this old high. Okay, this old high and then if you shoot your, okay, this order is where we're going to reference now. That would be 20 day IPDI. So why do I call this 20 day IPDI? Because if you put your vertical line at this last bearish candle and you look back, okay, this is going to fall under the last 20 days. So this is called a 20 day high, okay? And that will be a good target for a next buy side before the 60 day rejection drops. So we want to see how price reacts of that level if we can look for buys or all right, so price is showing me a straight higher around that level. We could potentially get higher move, or we could also potentially trade down into this level and get higher prices. It's all subjective. Let's, let's see what price does. I would basically like to see price close above this last bearish candle before I see the upside. So, all right, so we've seen price showing willingness to go to the upside. We know for a certain that price is trying to reach for this level. And, Okay, price takes out that level. Now price, let's see if price still respects this level. If price is not showing willingness to trade higher, then probably it wants to correct back down because it's kind of like a fair value gap on the daily inside this range. So I I like that for you guys. <clears throat> so there's a fair value gap inside this point. And if price shows willingness to trade lower, then we know price wants to fill up this fair value gap. And this fair value gap is a 20 day fair value gap. Okay, as an institutional reference point, 20 IPDA FVG. Anyways, so. Uh, this is this actually falls under 20 IPDI using the same thing I taught you guys. If you use this current down candle, if you go back the last 20 days, this is where this fair value gap falls out. So, you, all you just simply do is uh, you do something like this and um, shape price back. And you can see this actually falls under the last 20 days. So, that is going to be a 20 day fair value. I want to see how price reacts of that level to know if we're going to buy or sell. So let's actually see what price does first. Okay, price is showing willingness if it wants to trade higher. Let's see what price does around that level. Right, <clears throat> so price has taken out this level. Trades into a 20 day fair value gap. We're looking for willingness for price to trade higher into that 20 day fair value gap. If price takes out this level, then we know price is reaching for 
this level around that point. Now we've reached a new month. What we're going to do is we're going to repeat the same look back process again. Okay. We're going to identify all institutional reference points. First 20 day, so I'm going to have a 20 day, 40 day. Okay. This actually is 39 and 60 lastly. That is our institutional reference point in terms of IPD data ranges. So you're going to take out this line. So we have a daily uh, rejection block, equal body candles, 20 day IPD rejection block. So that's a 20 day IPD swing low. Write this down 20 day. No, let's, let's actually make this 20 IPDA low. 20 IPDA low on that level. Okay. 20 IPDA low. This actually falls under 20. So 20 IPDA I. <coughs> so these are all institutional reference points where price is going to want to seek for on the higher time frame and reference all institutional points 20 IPDA uh, other block so we're going to use OB and uh, this is this becomes uh, 40 IPDA low this is actually a 40 because it falls in the second box which is a 40 IPDA and then lastly the swing low this is going to be 40 IPDA low, 40 IPDA low. So that is all what we're going to reference in terms of institutional price action. And we have basically just this could be a mitigation block for cause price to trace higher. Took out this candle. So this is a daily mitigation block. We can expect a retracement back to this level. The price shows willingness not to trade higher from that level. And we seek these levels and these levels as down side targets in price and should price retreat back to the upside this is a mitigation block on the daily time frame so that is a 20 day bearish other block sorry no mitigation block 20 day bearish other block okay so let's see what price does all right so price broke through price has been tested this level 20 day bearish breaker if you actually look at, if you actually pull out your Fibonacci, you're going to see this was the midpoint of this breaker candle the price tested. And let's see what price does. If price is not showing us to respect that level, then we're going to want to reach for this level. And then if price is not showing us to want to trade higher from that level, we're going to want to reach from this, reach for this level. So this is how we look at price using IPDA. Let's see what price does. Okay, price is at that level. Price is showing signs of stalling around this level. Let's see if price is willing to trade higher. Okay, so price, we know for a certain now that price is reaching for this level. Price is retested very short of block. We're not surprised for that level. And uh, let's see, okay, price is retracing. If price is retracing, where is that nearest institutional reference point? Okay, so this is a 20 day. We are referencing an institutional point, 20 day mitigation block. We can call that breaker. So now this is of no value because price is taken at this level. So no longer value to us. No longer value to us. We know now that the next downside level is this level. And price is showing willingness to want to trade down. So this is going to be the level I want to look at for the downside price prices okay so let's see what price does all right so price tap just level perfectly the midpoint of this bearish candle again that is where price taps your price fails to respect this level so let me actually put a line there the midpoint of this bearish candle so i'm actually just eyeballing this normally i would draw if you not achieve to a real world scenario but i'm actually just eyeballing that level as a negation block midpoint if price closes above this midpoint, then we know we're reaching for the bearish of the block. And if price fails to respect that bearish of the block, we're reaching for this level and then higher prices. 
So that is the way you want to uh, box in price. Price is showing really a situated downside. And we know for a certain now that price is reaching for this level, okay? Price is going to want to reach for that level. And if we're, going to want to, we're going to see if price wants to trade back into that level. So now let's see. Um, <clears throat> okay, and by the way, I want you guys to note that at the start of December, we do the same process again. Start of every new month, you want to do the same process again. Okay, so price stops at level. Now, price is showing, there's a nice, very nice down, up close candle around this level. Price is showing signs it wants to trade higher. Okay, so that is a very good thing we want to see. If price is showing signs it wants to trade higher, where is our institutional reference point? Boom. Okay. Our first institutional reference point is this bearish shadow block. And then the next is 20 day bearish shadow block, then 20 day rejection block, then 40 day, because by the time you get to this new month, this is actually going to be a 40 day level. So let me actually just replay quickly to see how price reacts to our level. So price smashes our first to target. Price is showing extreme bullishness. Price has taken out this level, and now we know price is reaching for this level next. Uh, so there's nothing on the downside to reference institutionally. Okay, and also I want you guys to know that there's a daily fair value gap inside this point. Daily fair value gap to that point. So that is going to be a 20 day fair value gap. So let's see what price does. Price reaches that level. And uh, let's see. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you can use this as a level downside. Should we see a correction in price? So let's see what price does. Should we see price showing willingness to trade higher from this level? So we you know price is reaching for this high, which for this high, most likely that I. I'm going to play this on full speed because we're at the end of our lesson and eventually price reaches our target. And that, guys, is everything for our first part of my three part series. Hope you guys study this and hope you guys receive value from this. So thank you all for being a part of this. And I'll be dropping the next video very soon.